In this video, we'll see how X-rays are interacting in matter. Now let's get started. The X-rays which is coming out from the X-ray tube are polychromatic in nature. So polychromatic means there will be a difference in the energy. So uh, some will be high energy, some will be in moderate energy, some will be have uh, low energy X-rays. So these combinations of difference in energy, we used to call it as polychromatic. Okay. So when this uh, polychromatic beam interact with the matter, so matter in the sense it may be human body or something, anything, object or metal, something else. So when it goes and interact with the matter attenuation occurs there so attenuation means uh, when x-rays interact with the matter some amount of energy may scattered from the matter or it may absorb in the matter or it may penetrate without any interaction so we used to call it as attenuation in diagnostic radiology three attenuation process are, happens so before going into those interactions let me say from where the diagnostic radiology uh, energy range starts so it starts from 20 keV to 130 keV. So in between this range, these interactions will occur in the matter. So as I said before, there are three interactions happens when X-rays interacts, right? So number one is Cogren scattering and number two is Compton scattering and number three is photoelectric effect or photoelectric absorption. We'll see those interaction detail in now. First, we'll see about the Cochrane scattering. So sometimes we used to call this uh, Cochrane scattering as unmodified scattering or uh, elastic scattering. Mainly this Cochrane scattering will occurs when the X-ray energy is less than 10 keV. So that this uh, low energy X-ray photon will interact with the whole atom so that whole atom go to excited state and immediately it comes to its ground state and releases the excess energy in the form of x radiation in different directions so that x radiation we used to call it as scattered radiation so here in cogren scattering the scattered x radiation and the incident x radiation wavelength and energy are equal because of this reason we used to call the scattering as unmodified scattering so uh, here nothing is modified so like uh, uh, mirror it just reflect the light in a different direction that's all so here the energy is not uh, lost or it does not absorb in the matter finally this cogren scattering produce a negative sense in the x-ray image quality so because of low energy it just produce a noise in the radiographic image so we don't need that noise so this Cogren scattering is not useful for producing x-ray image well in diagnostic radiology mammography uh, energy starts from 20 kvp so uh, at 20 kvp the Cogren scattering may be around five percentage but in general radiography, the starting KVP is from 40 KVP. So we'll get around 3% of Cogren scattering. So secondly, we'll see about the Compton scattering. So this incident X-ray photon will interact with the outermost electron of the atom because it just have less energy to interact only with the outermost electron. It cannot go and interact with the innermost electron. Okay. When this X-ray photon interacts with the outermost electron, it transfers some amount of uh, its energy to ionize the electron from the atom. So this electron get ionized from the atom. So this ionized electron, we used to call that as Compton electron. And the incident photon losses its some amount of energy and it travels in different directions. So it, it gets scattered in any direction in the matter. If this X-ray photon travels back to the direction of the incident X-ray photon, we used to call it as backscatter. It just uh, scattered back to the direction of the incident photon. Okay. At last, uh, this ionized electron and the scattered X-rays will have sufficient energy to do another ionization process in the neighboring atoms of the matter. Or sometimes it may come out from the matter without any interactions again. So here the scattered X-ray photon energy and the wavelength is different here. So the scattered X-ray photon energy is lesser when compared to the incident X-ray photon because it just transferred the energy to the electron, right? So because of that, it loses its some amount of energy. So uh, when X-ray energy is less, automatically the wavelength of the X-ray beam is going to be longer. So the X-ray energy is inversely proportional to the wavelength. 
finally this content scattering is also not useful for producing an image so it's just going to produce a noise in the radiographic image and mainly this content scattering is the one of the major factor in increasing the radiation dose mainly while uh, doing fluoroscope procedures we radiographers and radiologists will be there inside the fluoroscopy right so this content scattering is going to pr produce a serious effect on our x radiation dose but while when we see in general radiography uh, departments only patient will be there uh, during the exposure so we radiographers will be standing behind the barrier at certain distance so that this content scattering effect will not produce a serious hazard to the radiation exposure of radiographers okay so always try to protect yourself by proper shielding during fluoroscopy procedures so finally we have one exception that is we can reduce this content scattering so we can achieve this by increasing the kvp factor so always you should not keep low kvp factor if you reduce the kvp the x-ray energy is going to be reduced so that it produce more content scattering so always you, we have to keep somewhat higher kvp to reduce the content scattering so that if you increase the kvp it does not go and interact with the outermost electron it, it just directly go inside the inner shell electron so that content interaction is reduced content scattering is inversely proportional to the x-ray energy now we'll see about the photoelectric effect or photoelectric absorption so here the incident x-ray photon will interact with the innermost shell of the atom so here the innermost shell in the sense it's exactly interact with the k shell electron of the atom and also k shell is the one of the shell which have more binding energy in the atom so because it is present next to the nucleus so that it have more attraction in between the nucleus so it have more binding energy so if incident x-rays interact with the electron it's lots of most of the energy in the k shell so here in this interaction what happens is the incident x-ray photon will transfers its most of its energy to the k shell electron so that this k shell electron gains kinetic energy due to interaction and it get ionized from the atom so we used to call this ionized electron as a photo electron so here the atom is now unstable because it loses its one electron right so to compensate or to make it stable the outermost electron will come and drop into the innermost electron during that process the outermost electron will accelerate to drop down into the k shell electron so during that acceleration the outermost electron will release energy in the form of x radiations so we used to call that x radiation as characteristic x rays so here this characteristic x rays will act as a scattered radiation so we used to call this characteristic x rays as also secondary radiation so here the photoelectric absorption is not constant in the matter so, so each and every matter will have different absorption rate for example if we take our body we have bones we have more amount of soft tissues and air is filled in our body so each and every substance will absorb in different rate based on their atomic number in our body bones have high atomic number when compared to soft tissues so bones will absorb more x-ray photons because of that in radiographic image bones are seen as hyperdense or in other words it is seen as white in contrast okay while in contrast studies that is we used to call it as a dye they have higher atomic number right so because of that it looks as a hyper dense in the radiographic image that is white color in the radiographic image so in fluoroscopy procedures we used to inject the contrast and we used to see the blood vessels and we used to do barium studies fill the intestines to see the intestine structures to visualize any pathologies but in soft tissues it absorbs x-rays in moderate range so it look as isodense or in other words we used to say a gray in color while when we take chest x-rays we used to notice the lung fields is very dark or black the lung is filled with full of air right so there will be very 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 less absorption in the air air will not absorb the x-rays that much it's going to absorb around one percent so remaining 19 percent of x-rays are going to reach the cassette so because of that air is seen as dark in the x-ray image or high potence in the x-ray image here these organs have different absorption rate so we used to call this as differential absorption again i'll say whenever the atomic number is high the photoelectric absorption is going to be more if the atomic number is low the photoelectric absorption is going to be less because of this differential absorption we are getting different contrast densities on the uh, radiogram